I would like to briefly talk about the practical efficiency of Fibonacci heaps and the various heap data structures. The motivation here is the following. When we do DAX algorithm, we learn about Fibonacci heaps as a theoretical tool, not as one that we actually would want to use. And I want to shed some light on whether Fibonacci heaps are efficient in practice. And if not, what alternatives do we want to use? So if you've seen Fibonacci heaps, then you will actually would have noticed that they're not that complicated. So they're not this outrageous data structure that you would expect. It's only of theoretical interest. Nonetheless, could be that simply the constants that are hidden in the asymptotic notation are so large that it's not worth using them. So we're going to have a look at a couple of data structures and then two papers, or mostly one paper, that compares these in terms of practical efficiency. First one is Fibonacci heap. So we have an excellent amortized running time. Question is, are the constant factors in the O2 large to actually make them interesting in practice? If you think about it, we're talking about log factors here. So log factors are, or medium-sized input, not that large. So if there's a big overhead in terms of the data structure, in terms of links that we have to maintain, in terms of the height of the tree, then this could hurt the practical performance. So let's see what competitors we have. We have the Fibonacci heaps, obviously. Binomial heaps. So very similar to Fibonacci heaps. The decreased key operation is less efficient, but the simplicity might make it better in practice. As an alternative, Pairing heaps, so we haven't talked about pairing heaps before, but pairing heaps are a type of self-adjusting binomial heaps. So if you think of balanced binary search trees, so you have like AVL trees, red black trees, those are self-adjusting in the sense that if they get too unbalanced, they, they adjust to be balanced again. And this is a similar concept just for binomial heaps. And I have them here because they actually perform very well. Then there's obviously the standard heap, so standard binary heap. So as you will know it, storing the heap in an array. Every node has two children, except for the leaves. This is simple, memory efficient. There is a generalization of this, uh, which is a K array heap. So for instance, a four array heap, eight, 16. So instead of having with a root and then two children, and then for the two children, four children, and so on, um, we have four children, 16 grandchildren, and so on, all still nicely saved implicitly in an array. In the comparison, this will be called implicit K in contrast to explicitly representing the heap as a tree data structure. So also for the standard heap, we could store it as a tree data structure. We do not do so because an array you'd expect is more efficient. Now, two more. One is so-called strict Fibonacci heaps. So what is a strict Fibonacci heap? This is just a variant of the Fibonacci heap where instead of amortized running times, we get the same guarantees as for Fibonacci heaps, but instead of amortized, we get those worst cases. And one more, and that is sequence heaps. Sequence heaps are a data structure that are designed for external memory or generally efficient memory access, or also in terms of a accessing the cache. Um, and those we will only come to in the comparison at the very end, because we're going to first talk about a paper that um, compares all of the other options mentioned and a few more. If you look at the lines of code, the differences are actually not that large. So the implicit and the pairing are very close together. In particular, the implicit simple, where you just have the keys, that's not the one we would want to be using. So the implicit actually has slightly more lines in the pairing. And Fibonacci is not that far away from that. So let's look at running time. And we are going to look at it in the context of Dijkstra's algorithm. So Dijkstra's algorithm on the US street network. And we count the number of operations that we managed to do in a certain amount of time, which is insert, delete, min, decrease, key. And here in the plot, you only have the implicit representation, the corresponding explicit representations, and the binomial heap. 
And what you see here actually is that the binomial heap is not that far off. I mean, we'll have, we'll have it in a table in a moment, but it, it compares better than the explicit representation. What you also see here is that, at least in this example, the um, four array heap works best. But well, let's look at the more complex heap data structures. What we see here is that the pairing heap performs best, but Fibonacci is already next. So Fibonacci heaps are not this strange theoretical data structure that is only used in the analysis of Dijkstra's algorithm, but it is a reasonably efficient implementation of priority. Let's look at this numerically. Uh, this is a table from a paper. I have a list of papers also later on. There are quite a few columns. Let's just focus on work clock time. So the first column. Um, and there what you see is the implicit representations perform best in, in this set of experiments, but pairing binomial and Fibonacci are not that far off. Therefore, Fibonacci factor three is already quite a bit, but it's not outrageous. What you also see, and which is quite interesting to look at, is how many decreased key operations do we actually have? Because all of the work that we put into the Fibonacci heap was because of the decreased key operations. And if there are not that many, then obviously Fibonacci heap might not be the best choice. So here you see you have 14 times the number of inserts and delete mins as you have decreased keys. So this might be then also an indication why Fibonacci heap is slightly worse than the implicit representation. If we change these numbers, then also the whole picture changes. The next set of experiments has nothing to do with Dijkstra's algorithm. What um, the authors did there was simply, we have a sequence of insertions and then decrease key and delete min. And it works as follows. We first have n insertions. And then we iterate through one insertion, one decrease key, which actually sets the key to something that is the new minimum, and then delete min. So this guarantees that we have lots of decrease key operations that actually do something. And if you do this experiment, then the picture looks very different than the pairing heap is better. You will not achieve this second. So and the implicit representations only come later. The Fibonacci heaps don't come out at top, but if you see the pairing heaps, Fibonacci heaps, and binomial heaps, one of a class of heaps, those here now outperform the implicit representation, with the pairing one being the one that one, that one would want to choose. Let's try to draw some conclusions from these experiments. Fibonacci heaps are actually not that bad. They perform well. The only reason you would want to be using them is that, at least in these experiments, either the pairing heaps or the implicit k array heaps always outperform them. And which one you would want to choose depends on the input. You need to know how many decrease key operations you expect, and depending on that, one or another choice might be better. What is unfortunately missing in this comparison is a very efficient heap data structure, which I also would like to mention and discuss. Those are the sequence heaps. So the sequence heaps are made for good memory access. This is a plot from the paper on sequence heaps. As you see, for larger inputs, at some point, the binomial heaps run into problems while the sequence heaps continue to work well. So here that is running time uh, divided by log n, but also for smaller input sizes, sequence heaps perform extremely well. Now let me also briefly mention which libraries or some libraries in which you can find heaps if you need them. So there's a boost library with various algorithms implementations, and there are in particular various heaps. If you actually want to do experiments with Fibonacci heaps, or if you want to use pairing heaps, KRA heaps, you can all find them in the boost library. But pairing heaps, for instance, are also more widespread, and you can find them also in other libraries. To wrap up, let me just quickly show you the papers that I used. So the first paper here is a paper where most of the experiment that I showed you came from. And then the second one is the one for the sequence heaps. Pairing heaps, I added the original paper 
But if you want to read about them, I would also recommend the textbook, Algorithms and Data Structures, a basic toolbox, and the two libraries mentioned. That's all.